Hi, I'm Ira Wallace with Southern Exposure Seed Exchange here at Acorn Community Farm. And I'm for the soil because the soil is the basis of our agriculture. Soil grows our plants and I love good soil. Thank you so much for returning for part two of this special episode celebrating National Soil Health Day coming up on June 23rd. I'm your host, Jeff Ishi, and joining us, my co-host, Dr. Eric Benfelt with Virginia Cooperative Extension Community Viability, and Mary Sketch Bryant with Virginia Soil Health Coalition. A brand new song was recently released called For the Soil. It was written and performed by Ennis and Phil Carter with Social Impact Studios, and we asked Ennis, what exactly do you do at Social Impact Studios? So Social Impact Studios was started in 1996 uh, by myself and Phil as a senior visionary advisor, and we continue to run Social Impact Studios out of Philadelphia um, as a creative hub to engage people in culture, to act on important social issues. Now you can imagine in 1996, when we started doing this work, it was a lot different than it is now. I just want to remind people there was no internet. <laughs> uh, there were not really cell phones. Uh, so we were really a cre- more like a creative agency that worked with nonprofit organizations and artists um, to help them do their creative work. A lot of it was graphic design. And because people didn't have the tools, they didn't have Canva, and they didn't have, you know, square space to do their own website. So they needed help with that. And that came out of a background that I had as a community organizer working on environmental issues in New Jersey and a cultural anthropology background that Phil has as a musician and somebody that understands social sciences and education. And so we've always kind of combined our forces to try to provide for the folks that are doing really good work in the world out there to amplify their voice and to do that in a way that has changed over the years. So now we do everything from, we still do graphic design and websites, but we do everything from uh, community action uh, events or um, uh, exhibit art exhibits that actually bring, or big large scale murals or in integrating video and music like we did with For the Soil. And Ennis and Phil, we hear that soil both has a memory as well as a story. And the idea of memory is certainly important with uh, music as well as art. And you were just referring to 1996. How do you use uh, memory and nostalgia in communicating and thinking about social change? Uh, well, oftentimes nostalgia is uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, connecting point. It's a jumping off point uh, when you uh, are initially starting a project or meeting someone. Um, know what they do, uh, it's a it's a good good way to get in and common yeah common ground. I think part of our job is as culture bearers and culture workers is to be open to connecting the dots between other people's culture, even if we haven't directly had that experience. As artists, it's we're very skilled at imagination. <laughs> and so we can get into the minds of people, not in an insidious way, but we can think about what are the common things that all people go through, but then we're listening for cues about what backgrounds might have brought them to some some form of understanding. And when it comes to promoting issues, that is how I got started, was just really getting to the core of the issue and not being afraid to say something really simple, like soil health is health for everybody. It just leaving it at that and then starting a conversation kind of what you're doing here you never know where people are going to actually answer their own questions because you've started a conversation as opposed to telling them what it is that they're supposed to do Ennis and phil talking a little bit about the impact piece how do you measure 
impact and change. You know, we know, say, take soil health. We know that it is not a full measure of impact to just look at how many people put cover crops in their garden. You know, so how do we, whether it's the For the Soil Initiative or other efforts that Social Impact Studio is working on, how do you look at that change factor? So in our work, we definitely rely heavily on listening, putting our ear to the ground and getting a sense. And because we've been doing this for so long, you can kind of pick up when something is tipping and something has a has a sense. We talked in the first episode about how Social Impact Studios created the Buy Fresh, Buy Local initiative nationally many, many years ago. And we can get a sense of it Literally, when we travel, we see bumper stickers on people's cars for Buy Fresh, Buy Local. So we know it's working. We know it's out there. Um, on a technical level, we can look at trends. We can look at um, hashtags or we can look at uh, polling. So whenever we do large scale polling, we can get a sense of how many people are recognizing something. And just to, as an industry inside, those kinds of polls, they don't poll millions of people. I mean, you can probably get a sense of that during the election season when they say, you know, 25 percent of the people say this. They've only polled a couple hundred, if at most, uh, to get those numbers because human beings are pretty consistent. <laughs> you can you can tell a lot from um, that. But I would go back to your point, Mary, that it's it's anecdotal, like trust your gut, like trust what you're hearing and um, look and see it in use and see how people light up when they see it. Um, we've heard that about for the soil, that people literally dig it, you know, um, no pun intended, that they get excited about it and that they want more about it. I'd like to go back to this this brand new song that you've written, Ennis and Phil Carter, and this brand new song is called for the Soil, just released this summer. And Ennis or Phil, I'd like to ask you about how you write the lyrics to this and, and also specifically the audience that you're writing for. Are you writing for elementary school kids? Are you writing for a college age audience for adult contemporary? What are you thinking? Well, first, I mean, it has to resonate personally and with my partner and uh certainly soil has has a technical specific audience that you want to talk to but we're it, it's for everyone so we try to have something in there that everyone can um it's not to make things uh, to oversimplify or to make things complicated. It's just to have something that, you know, you can have big words in there for kids, for young children. That's fine. They'll, that's how they learn. Um, but then there's also, you know, I don't know, uh, other language that is, could be picked up, uh, and also, I think we've all had this experience where we're adults watching something that is accessible for children. And there's a lot of inside jokes that they are not going to get that we are getting as adults or kind of fun aha moments of twists on language or references to other um, you know, rock songs or something. Um, when we weave that in, it means that everybody can kind of pay attention. It's like, wait a minute, there's something here for me too. This isn't just quote unquote dumbed down, you know, to a very yeah. basic level. We like to have uh, a a a community, a community audience, not just say, oh, we're performing for this age group or adults or kind of like you're performing at a county fair. I mean, it's a it's a wide audience. Okay, right. yeah. Exactly. Well, also thinking about, I, I, I know another a aspect that you're involved with art and education, and I think for the soil and the music is really fits in well with, you know, getting people really engaged in education and appreciation for the arts. Yes. Yes. That, that that's something that we do as kids all the time. We're engaged through art to learn something. And then, there's some kind of perception that that ends once you that that somehow we're not lifelong learners and learning all the time, but we are. And soil is definitely one of those um, complex 
ideas and subjects that um, needs ongoing attention. And Bill and Ennis, um, we, we always like to ask our um, guests, you know, what you, Social Impact Studios makes a lot of inspiring work. What, who or what inspires you though? Thank you. Good question. What music do you listen to? <laughs> Bill? Who are you listening to these days? Um, flip charts. Yes. Uh, well, Phil is obviously somebody that is very um, humble and the quiet one. Uh, but I will say that uh, Phil has recently gotten a resonator guitar known as a dobro. It's a metal guitar. So that's kind of a, that's new to us in the flip charts, but he has a, a lot of he's always listening, telling me about something new, um, and I think that that's something that I is common to the both of us is that we listen to a wide variety of music and like to listen to new things that are coming from different places all the time, um, but also connecting it back to what we understand the lens that we understand. I'd love to talk about why we're listening only to a teaser right now and what you talked about in the last episode, Jeff. Please, of yeah, please go ahead. A video is on its way. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason that you're hearing just snippets or parts of the song is that we actually do want to engage a community of musicians in Virginia. We're in the process of setting that up to do a, a more professional recording to put the song out, but also to do what we're calling the hoot and nanny. Um, and if you are followers of For the Soil, you will know about the coloring book that we created at Social Impact Studios that has an owl that we're naming hoot right now and a bunch of other characters such as a worm and, uh, you know, robins. So we're thinking there's hoot and there's Annie and um, they're going to be hosting this time to bring together a community of musicians and people to do um, a, a like a fun recording with a bunch of different musicians. And that is what's going to be put out as a video that goes with the recorded song. Well said. And, and we can take a moment here to highlight this upcoming event on Sunday, June 23rd, which is National Soil Health Day. For the Soil, a conversation is going to be hosting a, a very special family-friendly event at Camp Fire just outside of Farmville, Virginia, and that is spelled Camp Fire, P-H-Y-R-E. It is technically in Rice, Virginia. The address and all of the information you need is found at our Facebook page, For the Soil, or at our website, forthesoil.org. And that will be celebrating National Soil Health Day. Bring your musical instruments, your fiddle, your banjo, your guitar, whatever it is you play. This will be filmed for a video, as Ennis said. And that will be on Sunday, June 23rd in Rice, Virginia at Camp Fire. It's called the Hoot and Nanny Celebrate National Soil Health Day. I think we've got time. Let's go ahead and listen to that tease again of this brand new song from Ennis and Phil Carter, For the Soil. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We are for the soil. Roots growing far, thrive with diversity. One, keep it covered. Two, take it easy. Three, keep roots growing far, thrive with diversity. One, two, three. For the Soil, a brand new song from the flip charts, Ennis and Phil Carter. And Mary and Eric, we've got just a couple of minutes remaining in this special episode. Any further questions? And just building off their last, uh, uh, what Anna shared, it's sort of another example of sort of energizing with diversity, the idea of a for the soil hooting and Annie and thinking that uh, 
you know, in the soil, there's biology and there's chemistry and there's different insects. And so it's, I really appreciate that, Ennis and Phil, thinking about the importance of diversity. And maybe listeners can come out to the hoot nanny when we when we're having it. Yes, really looking forward to that. Uh, now you talk about engaging your audience. How can our listeners get in contact with you at Social Impact Studios? So we are at socialimpactstudios.com. Uh, we are also at theflipcharts.com. And uh, you can follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and even on Twitter. I'm going to call it Twitter still. Um, uh, but yeah, you, you can get in touch with us through any of those channels. Thank you for asking that. Ennis and Phil Carter, The Flip Charts and with Social Impact Studios. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you. And Eric and Mary, thank you so much, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. For the Soil, a conversation is made possible with funding support from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and the Agua Fund. Other partners include the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service, Virginia Cooperative Extension, Virginia State University, Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation, and partners of the Virginia Soil Health Coalition. Views expressed on this podcast are those of each individual guest. To download a copy of this or any other episode, visit the website forthesoil.org. And if you should have a specific question about soil health, call your local Extension office, your local USDA service center, or a soil and water conservation district office. Music used during today's program was provided courtesy of The Flip Charts, all rights reserved. For the Soil, a conversation is produced by On the Farm Radio in collaboration with Virginia Tech. I'm your host, Jeff Isham.